Hey everybody, this is Ribo at the Bench and today I am doing a disassembly cleaning video on the Cricut Hammond Cruiser. Uh, this is a knife I recently reviewed on the channel, a very large knife, um, but I actually, uh, I actually really like this. It's kind of clunky, it's kind of slow action, um, you know, it's a very inexpensive blade. Um, but uh, I don't know. There's something about it that I I just really kind of like. Um, it just it kind of owns what it is. It's not uh, a fancy knife. It's not um, you know overly tactical or anything like that. It's just a you know it's a good kind of get get work done knife. Um, and and I kind of like that. Um, but I didn't notice any videos on YouTube showing how to take it down. Uh, and I wanted to discuss a few things about kind of what I've learned. So I figured I'd get into this. Um, so a couple things real quick uh, that you'll need to get started. Uh, I use some kind of mat. I'm just here on the workbench. Uh, I use some kind of mat just to contain all the pieces, uh, keep things from uh, you know falling off the, the bench. Um, you also want some kind of rags. I'm using these kind of gun swabs, um, but old t-shirts, rags, paper towels, whatever. Uh, obviously your knife. Um, you want your Torx uh, screws. One of the cool things about the Hammond Cruiser is that um, the entire knife uh, can, well, almost the entire knife can be taken down uh, with just a T9. Um, so T9. Uh, T9 is for the pivot and for the frame screws, frame pins. Um, and I believe for the uh, thumb stud here, nope, that's T6. Thumb stud's T6, but you don't need that, uh, you don't need to really take that down. Um, the only thing that is T6 that you will need to completely take the knife down uh, is the pocket clip. Uh, I've kind of just saved some time and taken my pocket clip off just because I don't plan on using this uh, as a carry knife. So I'd rather just have a more ergonomic grip. Um, but the pocket clip is a T6 uh, screw. Uh, you will need to take that off if you want to separate um, the the uh, the frame from the scale. Sorry, struggling with words uh, late at night. Um, but if you want to completely take the knife down, um, you know, you will need to take that off. Um, but depending on where you have the pocket clip, it's not, you know, super necessity. Um, and then you'll want some kind of oil. I use CLP uh, just because it's kind of a good all around oil. I don't have to worry about having multiple things here to clean and then lubricate. Um, but that's just me. You can use, you know, in anything you want. All right, so let's get started. So um, first things first, I'm just gonna um, start taking out the uh, the frame screws here, um, and uh, these are kind of double um, screws. You have screws on each side of the uh, scales, um, basically like if you think about your Kershaw Skyline or something like that, um, and they'll have like a threaded insert on one side, um, and so you'll just have to pull one screw out, um, or I guess you know however many pins there are. Um, this one does have it on both sides, um, which just means more parts. Um, this knife has a lot of pieces to it, um, especially because of the uh, kind of, uh, I forget what they call it, the Cricut Locks system, L-A-W-K-S. Um, but basically like their, um, their method of uh, virtually turning this knife into a fixed blade, um, although I don't I don't totally buy that, uh, that it adds that much strength, um, but it, it certainly makes the knife um, stronger and kind of locks the frame in. And so because of that kind of braking system um, that they've included, there, there are a few more pieces, um, but, uh, but it's not too difficult. Um, I always get, have trouble getting this screw out, but um, I think it's out of the thread. Um, and then one thing that's kind of odd, and, and I guess I see why they did it. Um, well, actually I don't because of what I'll show when the knife's taken down. But essentially, um, the, the left side here, if you're looking at the knife like this, this left side um, does have the uh, slot for a T9. Um, so I can fit that in there, but I won't actually be able to turn this because this is just the threaded insert. Um, the back here is, is the actual screw. Um, and I don't really get why they did that. My first thought was, well, they did that to, to allow you to kind of prevent turning over here, but this is a keyed uh, pivot thread. And so I'll show that in a minute, but um, basically it's not gonna turn either way. Um, the other thing is there's this like rubber gasket in here um, that uh, you make sure you don't lose that kind of comes off the pivot screw. Um, I like to just put that back on the screw um, just so I don't lose it. Um, 
and uh, I'll leave the I'll leave the pivot thread in there um, just for simplicity. So there you go. Um, your knife is uh, is taken apart. You can pop the first scale off. Um, you can pull the liner off here. Um, this is just basically the the liner that doesn't do much. Uh, you'll have these two frame uh, pin threads, uh, spacers, whatever you want to call these. Um, and then you'll have your first washer here. Um, so this will be a bronze washer. Um, and the washers on this knife are kind of where things get interesting. Um, when I purchased this knife, I said this in the review video, but basically the person had reassembled it incorrectly um, and it was a really gritty action. It was just not smooth at all. Um, I really, really, really disliked it, um, but uh, after taking it apart, reassembling it, um, you know, it worked much better. So you're going to want to make sure you get the, um, the threads on there, or I'm sorry, the washers back on there correctly. Um, and, uh, and you can actually kind of play around with that. Um, because you'll notice here with these washers you have um, this kind of Teflon spacer and then you have the bronze washer and there's kind of dis disagreements I guess or just different opinions on um, you know should the brass or the Teflon go against the blade um, and I've tried both uh, to me uh, to me I don't notice a huge difference either way um, I think I like brass against the blade better um, but that just you know that could just be my kind of imagination um, either way is going to be really smooth but what is imperative with this is that you have enough space between this blade here um, and this frame here because of this which is the lock system um, so you'll have this um, kind of stop pin here um, and then you'll have this disc and you can just kind of rotate that and pop it off and this is just this thin piece of metal um, but essentially the reason that you that you really need to have spacers between the blade and this um, is that if you don't have sufficient space if you only have the bronze washer in there um, basically anytime you open the knife this knife is going to rub against this and essentially going to use um, this kind of uh, disc as the um, as kind of the pivot washer um, which is going to mean that it's going to uh, just rub metal on metal. Um, it's not really going to give it any kind of lubrication or anything. Um, and that's what the guy had um, when I got it. Um, in fact, the uh, Teflon washer was between the brake and the liner, um, and then just the brass screw was between um, this and the blade, and it, it did not uh, work very well. Um, so you can pop that off and then you've got your um, locking frame and then you can push this um, threaded pivot screw. And you see what I mean here by the fact that this, um, this thread is uh, keyed so it has a flat side right there. And so it's not going to turn so I don't really understand why they have this but um, it is what it is. You can actually see that um, you know this this knife was previously owned by someone else and they've stripped out the um, the Torx head on this because they uh, couldn't figure out I guess why it wasn't turning uh, maybe thought it was Loctite or something um, and they've actually stripped out the um, the head there uh, <laughs> which um, is a shame but again doesn't really matter because of how this knife's constructed so I'm not going to go through the whole cleaning video here uh, simply because, um, you know, I just cleaned this knife a couple times. I've disassembled it a few times just to try some things out with the washers. But typically what I do is I spray some CLP on this as I'm going. Um, you know, for example, something like this. Um, and I just, I don't usually spray that much. That was an accident. Um, but I kind of let that sit there for a while and that CLP will kind of get to work on the, the dirt. Um, and then come back and just wipe it down. Um, kind of, I, you know, I don't want to put the knife down uh, together too wet, um, but uh, you know, I definitely want some lubrication. So basically, I'll just give everything a thorough CLP coat, uh, make sure I get any kind of grit and grime off. But I've kind of done that already with this knife. Um, so I will. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the reassembly video. Um, and I can uh, talk about a few other issues uh, as I as I do that. Um, so when you're reassembling, uh, the one thing that you'll need to make sure you get right um, is uh, remember this is a keyed pivot, 
Um, and so that really only matters, I think, on the locking frame. So the locking frame, if you can see uh, right here on the pivot hole, um, actually has a, the, the top part is flat. And so when you're dropping that on, you have to get that lined up perfectly, which mine is exactly opposite. Um, but you want to get that lined up perfectly, and that's the only way that you'll be able to get it um, on there. Um, so after that, you can drop on the blade again. Um, I just tried this with the Teflon against the blade. Uh, now I'm going to try this with the um, with the brass against the blade, the Teflon against the frame, um, and then uh, actually before I do that, see I'm already messing up. Before I do that, I got to put the brake back on there. Um, that's kind of the downside of having these kind of fancy um, new, you know, design elements is that <laughs> kind of throws you off when you're disassembling a knife. That's what I really love about the Skyline is that it's so freaking easy to disassemble uh, and put back together. Um, okay, and then so brass is against the blade. Flip the blade back. Um, let me just rub that down real quick. Get that nice and clean. You'll see here, um, this is kind of interesting, the metal um, on this um, on this locking system here, um, this this knife doesn't use a, a lock bar, um, is kind of dented in here. I don't know what really could have caused that, but it's like the metal all along here is, is just kind of dented and messed up, um, which is really interesting. I've been trying to imagine what could have caused that, and I just, I don't, I'm not sure how that could have gotten dented, but anyway. Um, all right, so we got that back on. Um, you'll want to put your um, your spacers in here for the frame screws. Um, oh, you'll want to also drop um, this locking pin um, down in there. Oh, let me pop this blade back off. Um, down in here and then there. Um, I, I suppose it could have been something with that locking pin that um, that caused it to bend, but I still can't really imagine how that happened. Um, and there you go. So um, on this, you're going to just want to make sure that the um, spacers go into the slots here, the pivot screw, the locking bar, um, and you should be good. Um, and then, uh, oh, <laughs> nope, just kidding. Um, bronze washer. Wow. It's late, guys, so don't hold it against me. I have a two-month-old that's been crying a lot. So this is my uh, sanity is coming out and doing these videos right now. So there we go. All right, I'm going to call that completely put back together. Pop this uh, handle back on and throw these screws back in. Um, like I said, I'm not putting the pocket clip back on. Um, this knife is going to go probably in my car. Um, possibly in the tool chest, uh, but either way, um, this is just much too large of a knife for me to carry in my pocket, um, and so there's no point in me having a pocket clip. Um, this this knife is super ergonomic. I love the way it feels in, in the hand, um, and a pocket clip does nothing but get in the way of that, um, really on any knife. Um, that's why I took the pocket clip off my Spyderco Delica. Um, and I, I just love it. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll have a review of that Delica soon. Um, <laughs> one thing too, just while I'm kind of uh, kind of talking here just to kill time while I reassemble this, um, I just I don't get why Cricut does this um, kind of cutting out these holes on their um, on their liners or on their on their knives. The M16 obviously is the one that um, is kind of most recognizable for that. Um, but this one too is just, I don't know, it's not really a skeleton look, um, but it's also not really, I don't know, like it's not really enough to take out, like the M16 at least, you know, it's enough to really take out some weight. Um, on this knife, it's just kind of sporadic. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, make sure you get that gasket back in there um, when you're putting this pivot screw back in. Um, 
easy to forget. And this should be the last piece. Um, I usually just tighten mine down, check the centering, and that's pretty good. Um, usually I have to adjust this a few times, but I actually really like that action. Um, this knife is a little bit slower action. It's not the best flipper, but uh, very smooth flipper. Um, and so I, I, you know, I really like that. Um, one thing to note, just when you're putting this back on, uh, it can be easy to look at this and think, well, I don't have uh, maybe the, the handle on all the way tight or something. Um, this knife, just the fit and finish, like I mentioned in the video, just isn't quite all there. Um, and so there are going to be some spots like right here where you can see that the scales and the liners don't really quite line up correctly, um, even where um, you may have spaces in between the liners and the scales where it's not perfectly flat. Um, and when I've taken this down, I have noticed that on the scales that on the underside it's not completely flat, um, which is too bad, but you know, on a $15, $20 knife, not something I'm super concerned about. So I hope this video was helpful for you if you own this knife. Uh, if not, and you had the opportunity to get it for, um, I'd say in the $15 range, uh, maybe 15, 18 bucks. Um, you know, it's a good pickup. I really like it for for a large knife. Um, you know, it's kind of fun. Uh, it's not something I'm going to carry, but but I do really like it. Um, so anyway, hope this was helpful for you. Uh, I will see you next time.